what are the most common injuries you see in people who ruck and what are the steps that you recommend people take to mitigate those? I mean, you see a lot of, I mean, if you do it at lighter loads, you don't see a lot of injury. And you've seen this proven in special forces training. I mean, the number one cause of injury is running and there's no close second. You know, lifting is number two and marching is way down the list, right? I mean, if you, the injuries that you'll see are usually from people that start too fast, too soon with too much mm -hmm. weight. So slow down, reduce the weight listen to your body. If you start to get shin splints, they're not going to get better from doing more of the same thing. You know, so yes, you can ice and rest and do all this stuff. You can also just reduce the weight and, and the distance and the and, and the time and, and put the variables that are like that. I mean, I, you know, look, my standard, I have a 45 pound plate. I carry it often, right? It's, it's by the door at at my office, it's by the door at my house. If I walk the dog, I ruck the dog. If I'm, if I can take a phone call outside, I put the 45 pound plate on and I go walk around, I go walk around the neighborhood and I take a, a phone call. It lets me kind of, you know, squeeze a, a few more hours out of the day that I don't have to dedicate to just fitness, you know? Um, some days I don't feel like doing that much or some days I want a little bit more and you just have to listen to yourself. I mean, look, if you start running with weight, you're putting a lot more strain on yourself. So make sure that you're physically able to do that. You know, there's a middle ground. That's a shuffle that is mm -hmm. really, really interesting to me. And when I want to do a little bit more and I don't want my knees to feel like I just went on a long run and I just try to keep my feet as low to the ground as possible. And I just move them as fast as possible. And I, I just kind of shuffle and my heart rate goes up a lot more and you can really accelerate that pretty quickly. Now, the faster you go and the, the more that you gallop, the greater risk that you're going to have of injury. So most people walking with 20 or 30 pounds, you know, you're, you're not really going to see a lot other than shin splints, if you're unready, if your Achilles starts to hurt, then dial it back a little bit, get a little more ready or, or look at supportive footwear. If your shoulders are sore, right, then, you know, decrease the weight. Or if it's, if it's a good sore, then that's them getting stronger. Yeah. I always find that in the winter, I just rock less because I, it's for whatever reason, I, I enjoy the heat more. Mm -hmm. So I have less motivation to go out in the winter. And I always find that when I really ramp up volume in the summer, that first week, I feel it in the shoulders again. Yeah. But as you said, it, it's easy to distinguish a good sore from a bad sore. This is a, this is foreign to me sore versus this is a, this is causing an injury sore. So if you get too much weight, what you'll start to do is you'll start to lean your body forward, your upper body, you'll pivot at your hips a little bit too much mm. while you're doing it. And you're doing that because you're trying to put the weight over your stronger muscles and you're, you're kind of cheating. And it's kind of, you know, how Arnold talks about, I don't care how many pushups you can do. I want to see you do 10 perfect pushups, like master the movement first and then get into the miles and, 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 and all mm. that, like do the movement correctly. And remove the ego a little bit about how much weight that, that you have, especially if you're starting until you get comfortable or know what you're capable of and, and keep good form while you're doing it. And you're going to reduce the risk of really anything. So that's kind of really a critical thing. Cause if you start hunching over and stuff, you're kind of not, you shouldn't be doing that. Yeah. For someone starting out, what would be the frequency you would recommend they do it? If they're starting out at a modest weight, would you put any limit on it? I mean, it's so much is subjective around, well, what's their step count and, you know, do they work out otherwise? I mean, try a couple miles, a couple times a week. I, I don't know. I really don't. I probably need to just have a more strict, hey, this is exactly what you should do. But if you tried two pounds with 30, two miles with 30 pounds and you're like, okay, that was cool. I mean, that's 30 minutes of your life. I mean, yeah. you can do that a lot. You can. Yeah. I think at light enough load, it. That, that, you know, once you're in a cardio zone two or below, there's really no limit to what I think you can do in terms of frequency. I mean, yeah. So you're, you're the expert. What do you, I mean, that's, you, that's my feeling as well. I, I, I never, so, so people always ask me, Hey, Peter, when you're doing your ruck, is that a zone two workout for you? And the answer is no, it's a zone one zone four, but it's, it's never just, I'm never just a steady state heart rate of 130 to 140. 
at least I just haven't, the only way I can do that is the ruck shuffle. Mm -hmm. So remember how we do our ruck and we end up at that track yeah. at the school? Yeah. There I can get into zone two. If I do a shuffle, I can titrate the speed of the shuffle to zone two. But walking here and there, my heart rate's either pretty low or pretty high when we're going up those really mm -hmm. steep hills. Um, which is part of the reason why I don't really bank it as exercise in my mind. Um, what I really enjoy are those pushes up the hills because then you're kind of getting that VO2 max. Yep. And I really like the walking down the steep hills because you're really working on how do your brakes work. Mm -hmm. And brakes are the things that fail when we age. And so walking down a very steep hill, and we have a lot of them here with weight on your back is a really good way to train eccentric strength, strength while the muscle is lengthening. So would you recommend going very slowly while you do that? Or is there any any value in increased speed while going downhill? Because I don't think there's a value in increased speed going down. I mean, the only athletes I know that do that are sprinters do that. Yeah. You know, sprinters will do downhill running to teach the muscle like how fast the legs can go. I don't, I don't, I think the risk reward for a normal person like me is not there to justify it. So I'm not going incredibly slow. I'm just going at what I think is the safest pace possible when I go down. Whereas going up, I'm really limited by my cardio system. I'm basically going yep. up as fast as my lungs will carry me. Because I, the way down hurts my knees more. The, the faster I try to go, my wife was a really, really good runner. And when we would ever go for run, she's like, you got to make up, make up speed on the downhills. I'm like, I'm just not willing to do that on a training run, if you will. And it's the same thing for me with rucking. I, I, I know what you're saying about the brakes. It's, it's, you can transition it into kind of a, like, it's a leg workout on the way down, unless you're sacrificing. One of my favorite workouts, and I don't do this often because this truly is a workout, is, is a heavy 80 to a hundred pack. Mm -hmm. And where we live, there are four short, but very steep hills. And it's an up and down of all four. And that's it. That's the, so walking there and then an up, down, up, down. Yeah, there's four. And that is brutal. Michael Easter and I have gotten into this hundred pound one miler thing. And it is a, it is a thing. I mean, to actually baseline your time against that is the, I'm, I ruck a lot and it's. What's a, what's a benchmark time that one should think of for a hundred and you're doing this as a shuffle. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's, it's shuffle and you kind of what gets exhausting is when you you change too much, like a walk to a shuffle. Like you need to kind of pick a cadence that you can kind of go. What? Give me an example of like how long would it take to shuffle a mile with a hundred pounds on your back? I don't is know, this, nine thirty was about. I was about to say ten minutes. Nine thirty was like about what we did. Now pretty tough. I've seen a a really 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 competitive runner did it in six thirty. I mean that's insanity though, right? So it's still a cardio. It's still a VO two max type of game i wonder at what point it, it starts being more about a strength carry like at a really extreme weight uh, at a heavy enough weight when you simply can't even shuffle it it probably yeah. shifts more to just pure strength yeah but the, the hundred pound i mean it's so you know 10 minutes and i'm it's it's a smoker it's a lot of fun. So, you know, because rucking can turn into this, this for me, it's, it's more like a baseline. And I think about how do I sleep well at night? I really, really prioritize that. And, you know, getting step counts and some percentage of those with weight on my back is a very useful tool for me to sleep well, which kind of th then tomorrow comes and it's a better day. Right. And, and, and so yet I think it's also fun to have these kind of challenges with a rock on my back. Cause I also hearken back to those days when I did that and it was really, really fun. And there were foot races and, and all of that. And that was a lot of fun. Uh -huh.